Today, we explore the heartbreaking case of William Ebenezer Jones Jr., a three-year-old boy who vanished on a cold December morning in 1962. As the days passed, the community rallied, but despite their efforts, William remained missing. Join us as we look into the details of this perplexing disappearance, hear from those who loved him, and uncover the haunting questions that linger to this day. Welcome to Fireside Unsolved, episode 106, The Unsolved Disappearance of William Ebenezer Jones Jr. William Jones was born on March 5, 1959, in Bridgeton, New Jersey, to the Jones family. His mother, Evelyn Jones, and his father, William Ebenezer Jones Sr., raised him in Vineland, New Jersey. William was a lively toddler with bright blue eyes and oversized ears, and had a unique vaccination scar shaped like a giraffe on his upper left arm. He had an infectious love for dogs, reading, and racing his toy cars. On the frosty morning of December 17, 1962, Three-year-old William Ebenezer Jones Jr. played outside his home alongside his sister, Jill. Their mother, Evelyn, glanced out the window to periodically check on the children as she tended to her younger son and prepared lunch. With the family's basset hound and collie running around them, William and Jill embraced the chill in the air, laughing and playing together on the crisp December morning. Wearing his light blue or gray snowsuit, decorated with a navy collar and silver buttons and matching hat, William's outfit was appropriate for the occasion. His tan high-top shoes crunched against the snow, and a dime from his mother sat in his pocket. It seemed like a typical bustling day in the lead-up to Christmas. William's father had already left for his shift at the New York Shipbuilding Company in Camden, and the family had spent the morning running errands, including a haircut for William and a quick stop at the bank. Around 11.45 a.m., a neighbor saw William playing alone and suggested he head back home. A little later, at approximately 1 p.m., a knock was heard on the door of the Jones household. She opened the door, only to find her two-year-old daughter, Jill, standing there alone, clutching a plastic potted poinsettia. In a voice tinged with confusion and fear, Jill said that she had gotten it from William and whispered something that would terrify Mrs. Jones. The boogeyman took William. A wave of panic surged through Evelyn as she rushed from the house, her heart racing as she dashed up and down the street calling out for her son. Strangely, in the midst of her frantic search, a stranger in a green car approached her and asked, are you Mrs. Jones? Evelyn was too overwhelmed to respond. She didn't recognize him and didn't bother to ask his name or why he was looking for her. With dread creeping in, Evelyn knew she had to report her son's disappearance to the police, plunging the family into a nightmare that would change their lives forever. The family quickly discovered that along with William, their beloved basset hound, Baby, was also missing. Baby was eventually found a short distance from home, drenched and shivering, but still, no sign of William. Meanwhile, neighbors rallied together, launching a desperate search that would stretch over four agonizing days. Hundreds of police officers, firefighters, National Guard troops, and volunteers scoured the area, united by a single goal, to find William. Emergency services were mobilized, combing through the dense woods and swamplands surrounding William's home while the nearby Maurice River was searched meticulously. Two Navy helicopters soared overhead, scanning the landscape from above. Bloodhounds from Philadelphia were brought in, their keen noses trained to pick up William's scent. But as they reached the vicinity of the family home, their search faltered. The area had been trampled by family, neighbors, and the authorities. Despite the massive effort and the countless hours spent searching, there was still no sign of little William anywhere. The reality hit them like a ton of bricks, William had disappeared, leaving a community on edge and a family shattered. William's disappearance sent shockwaves through the city, sparking fear and anxiety that echoed far beyond Vineland. The story captured national headlines, but for William's parents, the nightmare felt all too real. They moved away shortly after, distancing themselves from the memories of losing their son. William's father turned to alcohol, and the family became increasingly silent about their missing son. As a result, Mr. and Mrs. Jones became fiercely overprotective, determined to shield their remaining children from any potential horrors of the world. One of the early lines of investigation centered around the plastic poinsettia that Jill had come home with on the day William went missing. Rumors swirled that someone had been selling the flowers around the neighborhood just before William vanished. However, it was later revealed that the poinsettia had simply come from a neighbor's trash and had been passed around by local children. 
This led investigators to their first theory. With trash collection scheduled between 1.30 p.m. and 2 p.m. on the day of William's disappearance, could he have crawled into a trash bin and been discarded like the trash inside? Determined to leave no stone unturned, investigators questioned the trash collectors, who insisted they hadn't seen the boy and would have noticed if he had been emptied into the truck. Still, the possibility lingered, prompting a search at the local landfill for any sign of William. Yet despite their desperate efforts, the search yielded nothing. The Jones family, seemingly with nowhere else to turn amid the uncertainty of the investigation, sought the help of a local psychic. The psychic claimed that William was still alive. She told a story suggesting he had been abducted by a man whose wife was spiraling into a breakdown after the death of her own toddler. According to her, William had been taken to a remote Amish community in Pennsylvania, where he was being raised by a new family. Yet investigators remained skeptical. They believed that as William grew older, he would naturally have memories of his true family and would eventually reveal his identity. In 1964, the case took another twist when a different local psychic entered the scene. This one insisted that William had been struck and killed, not by malice, but by accident. The psychic said that a panicked individual buried William in a nearby area to conceal the tragedy. The psychic provided investigators with a detailed description of the man's car and appearance, further complicating the mystery. While the theories of what happened to William varied, the pain for the Jones family remained constant as they clung to the hope that one day they would uncover the truth about what happened to their beloved boy. Years later, in a desperate search for answers, William's sister, Jill, was placed under hypnosis, hoping to unlock buried memories from the day her brother disappeared. Under the trance, she recalled a vivid scene, holding hands with William as two men fought near an oil drum fire at the Palace of Depression, a peculiar landmark close to their home. I remember running, and eventually I could see the door to my house, she recounted. Authorities extensively searched the area, theorizing that William might have wandered inside or even been struck by a car and hidden there. In the aftermath of his disappearance, Jill experienced haunting dreams about her brother. It's like he's on the other side of a brick wall and he's calling me. I have to find a way to get to him. I still say I'm going to find him. William's disappearance was entered into the National Crime Information Center system, and Jill provided a DNA sample holding on to the hope that one day the truth will emerge. Despite hundreds of leads and tips, no body was ever found, no arrests made, and no credible sightings reported. Somebody has to know something. I really do believe that, said retired Vineland Police Sergeant Patrick Dougherty. Until I see a body, I'm not going to rule out that he's alive. As time went on, it became widely believed that William had been abducted, rather than simply wandered off. Yet despite the exhaustive search and extensive investigation, he has remained missing. Jill is now the last remaining member of William's immediate family. On top of a cabinet in her home rests an urn containing the ashes of her mother, father, and younger brother. When someone dies, you know where they're at, she reflected, her voice breaking. But with Billy, you don't have an answer. Anyone with information about the disappearance of William Ebenezer Jones Jr. is asked to call the Vineland Police Department at 856-691-4111. Thank you for joining us on this episode as we looked into the tragic disappearance of William Ebenezer Jones Jr. Stay curious and remember that sometimes the answers lie just beyond our reach, waiting to be discovered. We'll see you next time. Fireside. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards.